despite what you think and despite your experience maybe even, good habits are not hard to make and I'm going to explain why. So welcome. Um, habits, there's a lot of research on habit formation, but the very best is coming from a guy named BJ Fogg. Check out the book, Tiny Habits. Good habits are easy. In fact, we are habituated all the time and we are habituated very easily. And again, I'm going to explain why. So welcome. We're on Facebook tonight. Um, this will be posted to YouTube. Sorry about the technical difficulties, but here we go. And uh, I just want to say happy Mother's Day, first of all, to everybody out there who's watching. All you moms out there, we love you. And my mom is watching. And mom, I love you very much. Um, I'm very, very lucky to have you in my life and to have your unconditional love and support. And I know that you are always my number one fan. Sometimes you're my only fan uh, watching and 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 cheering me on. And not just though, because uh, uh, because I think it's actually uh, resonating with you and a lot of that has to do with the foundation um, of love and trust and encouragement that you raised me with and I, I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. I love you very much. Happy Mother's Day. I know that you wish that we could be together in the flesh and so do I. Um, and uh, it's strange days indeed, and I love you. Happy Mother's Day. So, um, I'm going to look down every once in a while because I might actually look and see if there are comments. Um, and so, if I'm doing that, that's what I'm doing. If I'm looking over here, it's because I have notes on the board over there. Okay? And if I'm looking at the camera, like my wife told me, I'm going to be doing a good job and she's not going to get mad at me. And uh, so... Here we go. Despite what you think, good habits are not hard to make. And I need to tell you about dopamine, okay? So dopamine is a neurotransmitter. You've probably heard of it. Once again, we are talking about, um, we're talking about the brain in a way that is undoubtedly oversimplified. There is no single causation. But for our useful intents and purposes, we can think about dopamine as, um, the neurotransmitter that is responsible for a couple things. It's responsible for, it's responsible for pleasure, and it's also responsible for reward, and it's also responsible for motivation. Um, so these are really important factors, obviously, in our in our makeup. Okay. However, here's a very interesting thing: dopamine is also like its desire. It is designed. Dopamine is designed. We evolved dopamine so that we would feel pleasure to be motivated to do things that are not easy to do. And that so that we would feel pleasure in being motivated to do things that would further our likelihood of survival, right? Because that's really the bottom line when you look at the neurochemistry is survival. And so when dopamine, when we're in the, you know, say, let's just paint a picture of you know, 10,000 years ago and you're out on the, out in the wilderness or you're in your, in your cave or you're in your hut or you're it and you need to, and you realize there's no food and I need to go out and I need to leave shelter and I need to battle the elements. I need to battle animals. I need to perhaps be gone for multiple days away from my family in order to go hunt for food and bring it back. Well, dopamine gives us the, a sense of like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I feel motivated. I feel, uh, I feel even excited by this by this challenge, right? And there's pleasure there. However, so then when we go out and we and we do that extren that that strenuous effort, and then when we come home, and we have a an animal on our shoulder, and you know, and we bring it into the den, and our family's there, and we cook it together. And we sit by the fire and we enjoy our reunion and we have a warm nourishing meal and the kids snuggle up with you and we feel all cozy and, and beautiful inside. That's not dopamine. That's actually more like oxytocin, which is another 
which is a, which is a hormone that is responsible for feelings of love and trust and safety and just like a good goodness feeling. So dopamine is not happiness. Dopamine dopamine is the drive or the motivation to go do things that will bring us happiness. So if we get stuck on dopamine activating our dopamine on things that are not intrinsically satisfying or not good for us or not healthy, then we get stuck in a dopamine loop. We just get stuck hitting the dopamine button. This is literally all stuff that the people that make the tablet or the phone that you're watching this on, the Facebook, every ding, every heart, every thumbs up, these are all meant to trigger our dopamine. And if the, and so too are things that are you know less innocuous and more intense like drugs you know cocaine incredible burst of dopamine and so what happens with dopamine is that every single time we get a hit of dopamine whether large or small the brain likes that and says oh i want to look what came before the dopamine the brain will look and say what came right before it and whatever came right before it will want to do it again so, yeah, do you ever check a, 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 a Facebook post or a YouTube video that you did or something like that and find out that you got a like and then look again five seconds later? Or did you ever check your email and then refresh it again five seconds later? You ever, your, your brain goes, oh, I got dopamine from doing that last time. I want more. I want to get it again. It's not a big deal. It's not a huge problem. But if we get stuck in those dopamine loops looking for that pleasure, that pleasure hit, that motivation hit from things that are not intrinsically satisfying, then, then we can start to feel really bereft and really empty and really depressed and really dependent and eventually addicted, whether it's to the cookie, to the, to the Facebook time or to cocaine, it's all works in the same continuum. Now the good, now the good news is, is this, is we can know this and almost everything that we talk about in these videos is teaching you tools and teaching myself and, and practicing myself tools to be able to use myself better, okay? So I, I've taken on a new identity and this is something else that some of the people that I work with in person that are even watching tonight will remember maybe from our talk about the Super Better book by Jane McGonigal, another highly recommended book, Super Better by Jane McGonigal. And in it, she, she talks about creating an identity, a, a basically a superhero version of your own self. So she, had a, she was recovering from, concuss from concussion, so she became Jane the Concussion Slayer, I think. And, and I borrowed a little bit from her. I didn't even realize it until I just said that, d d the Concussion Slayer. But... I'm taking on this new identity and coming 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 out of the closet with my history of depression as the depression slayer. So these are tools and resources for you to slay depression, which also is related to anxiety and trauma and all sorts of other things that are all related when the nervous system is stuck in either fight, flight, or freeze, anger, fear, or depression. So as the, dep the, the depression slayer, this is one of my most essential pieces of information to know. Anything that gives me dopamine, my brain will look what came before it and it'll say, I want to do that again. And so it's easy to make habits if you learn how to give your brain dopamine immediately following the thing that you want to habituate. Okay, so this is where uh, the research from BJ Fogg comes in. Okay. B.J. Fogg is one of the world's preeminent behavior scientists. He wrote an amazing book called Tiny Habits. I'm going to share with you a little bit from what he calls the most important chapter of his book. But please, by all means, don't think that, that that's a substitute for reading the book. The book is amazing. But this one is about, is about what we're talking about here today. How to, how to use your brain the way it works, okay? And the way it works is anything that gives it a hit of dopamine is going to want to do again, for better or for worse. And so I want to take charge of that for better or for worse principle and give my brain dopamine every single time it does something that I want it to do again. If it sounds a little bit like training yourself, it is. 
This is one of the mottos of the work that I do, train your brain or remain the same. And this is taking the animal part of my brain and using the human part of my brain to design training routines to train the animal part of my brain so that I, the human, the master, is in charge of the animal and not the other way around. Now, when I am a slave to my impulses, my addictions, my cravings, and dopamine is running me around ragged looking for satisfaction in things that aren't satisfying, drugs, Facebook, whatever it is, then the dog, the animal, is in charge of the master. The dog is walking the master at that point. So to be happy as a human being, we need to flip that back and we need to take control. And, and knowing how our mechanism works is a really good way to do that. So I know that I can use this principle to my benefit instead of to be at effect. Because rest assured, the people that made the app, the Facebook app, they also know this. And do I want them to be in charge of my attention or do I want myself to be in charge of my attention? The people that make the news, the people that make commercials, the people that, you know, do I want them in charge of my attention or do I want me in charge of my attention? Okay? So I want to be in charge of my own health and wellness. So I am going to habituate myself using this trick. And so what BJ Fogg talks about is to celebrate every single tiny habit. That's the name of his book, Tiny Habits. And this might feel, this isn't, now, this isn't every kid gets a medal. This isn't politically correct. This is just knowing how your nervous system works and using it to your advantage. And so every single time you notice something moving in the right direction, celebrate it and there's a specific way to do this and he talks about or this is something that i've worked on from other angles but it's basically a signature feeling okay and i'm going to amp up what he has in his book a little bit with some other techniques with some other tools okay so the tiny changes yes exactly patty the tiny changes to celebrate so he asks a couple questions that are really great to find out your way to celebrate it but I can tell you a story about mine. You've not maybe noticed um, a picture that I have on, you know, on Facebook and stuff. And I have it right here on my desk. And I'm going to show it to you, right? It's this picture, right? Because that, that is a signature. That posture, that, that image, that gives me a feeling of yes, I did it. That's dopamine, that yes. Now you're going to have maybe something different. It's not maybe going to be the exact same thing or the exact same word. And the point is, is that you have to find something that feels authentic to you because you have to find something that actually lights up your dopamine. So every single, and the more, when you get good at it, you can just, you don't need to actually do the physical posture. You can just think about it and you can activate it. And the more you practice it, you can add this little component right on the tail end of anything positive that you do. Get, get a little dopamine and then your brain is going to want to do that thing more and more and more. And that is how you can make a, a habit easy to develop. It does not need to take months. As even I've said in the past, that's old research. It does not necessarily need to be a hard struggle. In fact, most of the time when we do the hard struggle thing and we think, Oh, I got to keep doing this every day. For, usually we quit, right? Because we're not having enough fun. There's not enough dopamine. There's not enough pleasure involved. It's all, we're trying to whip ourselves into shape. And that doesn't work. Eventually, the dog will rebel and bite you if you, if you try to whip it into shape. Now, so we need to become more like a dog whisperer or a horse whisperer. And we need to train our brain with skill ease, kindness, playfulness, pleasure, and a happy brain learns better, period, end of story. And again, this is not, this is not political correctness. Everything is, you know, you know, pat your kid on the back, tell them, give them a cookie for being able to tie their shoe. There's a way in which that can become problematic, but this is, this is just skillful means. This is just using your brain the way it works, the way it's designed to your advantage, okay? So let's come back to the signature. So here's this thing I got, right? Boom. 
So I celebrate my, my successes. And he, if you want to find your signature, he, he poses three scenarios. And so just think about these things for a second. Imagine that you have your, you're applying for a dream job. You know, COVID's over. Everyone's able to go back to work. Maybe things are different. Hopefully things are different in a good way. But imagine that you're applying for your dream job and you get the, uh, you get, and you you've just been thinking about it. You've been, you, you, you get an awesome interview. You put in the application and this, you're getting a response and you're getting a response via, uh, writing. Okay. And you open up the letter and the letter and the first words that you see are congratulations. What's your inner experience? Is it a, wow, is it a woohoo? Yes, that is an authentic celebration for you. Try another one. Say you are uh, something that I do. Say, say, you're, say you're, uh, your laundry basket is in the corner of your room and you're cleaning up and you're in the zone and you're, you're, you're making headway and you're clean and, and you grab a sock and you got a perfect little ball sock and you're just in the moment, you're in the flow and woo, you toss it and it's perfect arc. Boom, swish. What do you do? What's your inner, what's your experience? Yes, right? That's an authentic celebration moment for you. So if you pay attention in these next couple days or you pay attention to those scenarios, you're gonna find that there is some little thing is a woohoo or yes or boom or wow. Like I can't even not do mine, right? That is your that is your instant hit of dopamine. Okay? Anything now you can use that on purpose and you can amplify it. Now this is amplification from his book, okay? The amplification is is to use your whole brain when you do this. Okay, that means you have a picture of yourself. That's one part of your brain that is responsible for imagery. And you want to have an image of yourself. So I have this image and you might not have a picture of it. This just happened to be because I do this. So someone caught it. A good photographer at my sister's wedding caught me doing yes, because I was excited. Right. Or, you know, um, so you might not have a picture of it, but you can have an image of yourself and you want to create an image of yourself, okay, in this posture, in this signature posture, okay? In addition, when you have this image, now this might be a lot to take in, but these are tricks from Neuro Linguistic Programming from NLP. You want the image, when you see the image, when you close your eyes or you even, I, I can, you can even see it with your eyes open, how does that work? You think, oh, I can't do that, I can't visualize, well, Tell me you don't see a banana right now. Banana. How about pink elephant? How about monkey? You can visualize. Those images flashed in your mind. Each of those things. So, I can flash this. Boom. Yes. Okay? So, I want to have that image. When it's something that I want to enhance, I want to make that image bigger, closer, and more than even closer, I want to be in the image. I want to be what's called associated. So I want to be in the image as opposed to dissociated, which is me looking at the image. If I'm associated, I actually am the image, okay? And so that might be, if that's too tricky, don't worry about that one, okay? But I want to make it bright, as bright as possible. The more vivid I make it, the closer I make it, the more I'm associated, the more powerful the emotion. This is also true, by the way, this is a just a little bit of an aside here. Um, hopefully I won't go too far off on a tangent, but if you, you know, people that are suffering, like say flashbacks, memories from PTSD, well, we do the opposite with them. We make them farther away, we make them smaller, we make them dimmer, and we make sure that we're dissociated. We are looking at the image. And in fact, we'll even do an exercise where we put the image up on a movie screen, we stop it, we rewind it, we fast forward it, we take the take we take the reel out of the projector and we erase it, all these things to just, and this will lessen the effect. But I wanna increase the effect with this one. This is my signature strength, right? So I'm gonna make it closer, I'm gonna be associated, I'm gonna be in it, 
I'm going to make it vivid and brighter and bigger, and that's going to enhance the emotional experience, okay? So that's all the image part. Now next is the sound part. There's a, I'm going to use a power word, some sort of a short, maybe monosyllabic or maybe two syllable kind of phrase that is just like, that's a yes for me or woohoo or ah, oh, yes, I did it or whatever works for you. You try to wait, you know, find something that's authentic. Okay. And okay. And so for me though, it's yes. All right. So then also posture, how do you organize yourself? So for me, clearly there is a posture, but there is an uprightness here. If you feel really psyched and proud, you're not going to be, oh, bother. You're not going to be in Eeyore mode, right? You're going to be, you're going to be upright. You're going to be bright. Your eyes are going to be wide. So you can do all this. This is chemistry. This is physio physiology. You can take it, you can use your physiology to your advantage. Yes. Right? So that is my dopamine hit. Okay? Emotion, right? I feel pride. I feel excitement. I feel, I feel pleasure. I feel motivation. I feel all these things. I want to note that. And then the feeling. What is the sensation? What are the sensations in my body? I feel alive. I feel invigorated. I feel... So remember, we're talking about, I'm, I'm the depression slayer, right? So I, if I have a history of depression, well, and dead and shallow breath, and well, depression has a posture. It also has sounds. It makes all, oh, yeah, it frowns. It does live. And I'm not making fun. I'm not making fun. But these are the things that we can take control of, that we can do differently to slay the beast, okay? So this, when I do this, now the key to, one of the keys to making it easier to create a habit by using this dopamine trick is to, it has to be immediate and it has to be, it has to feel authentic, right? So if you feel like you're just like, you know, if it doesn't feel real, like you can't, you might maybe don't borrow my yes. Maybe it's not a double fist thing. Maybe that's not your, maybe that's not your thing, but it has to feel authentic and you have to actually get the feeling of like, yes, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it except for to show you my yes. <laughs> and, and so how does this work though? Well, this works by, um, so Every single time I do my fog breathing, remember? And then, yes. Okay. Now, sometimes I'm not going to be in a position. I don't want to do the out loud. But when you get really good at it, here's another trick to do. When you're doing it, when you feel that signature and you put all those things together of the visual, the posture, feeling, the sound, you can do it all internally. The more you practice it, the more you will fire that as a habit and that will be a neural network that you can do with just the minimal of movement. So like my hands down below me, so I, I normally, but, if, but say it was underneath the desk, right? I'm gonna do, but I'm just gonna show you. I just go, yes. And I can generate it now internally. Without you even knowing, without, I can generate it, right? And so that's boom, and it becomes easy and automatic. That's a habit. A habit is anything that you do that has become easy and automatic. And it used to be, and these is something that I've said, which is also true, there is something to the frequency, intensity, and duration. But this is a way to increase the intensity part of the equation. Frequency times intensity times duration equals a habit. Anything you do with enough frequency, intensity, and duration will become easy and automatic, right? And so this is something that is now easy and automatic for me. Yes, right? And so I can do it 
easily just by thinking about it. I don't have to do the whole posture. I don't have to say it out loud. But now, as I'm playing with this more and with the tiny habits thing, and I'm just one micron in the right direction movement, and I am doing it every single time I do something that I want to reinforce, I am kind of amping myself up and amping up the way in which my brain programs things. This is just being skillful, okay? So how do I make it live? How do I make it real for you? So we got, oh, I got four minutes to go. So I'm just looking at my notes and see if I'm forgetting anything. No, I think we're good. So it's easy to make a habit if you make it easy by using your brain the way it works. If you try to punish yourself, if you try to beat yourself up, if you try to whip yourself into shape, that might work for a short term, but eventually the dog will rebel. It will become hand shy. It will become, it will have a broken spirit. If you try to train a dog, the animal part of your brain, if you try to train a dog by beating it, it might obey, but then as soon as you're not looking, it's gonna tear up the, the couch cushions, or it's gonna crap on the rug, or it's gonna bite someone. It's going to become unruly, or it's just going to have a broken, whimpered spirit, right? However, if you celebrate your successes, if you give the dog a treat every single time it goes to the bathroom in the right place, it's going to start going to the bathroom there every time, even if you stop giving it the treat. But considering that this is an internal treat, why stop giving it the treat? You can keep giving yourself the treat, the real treat of of intrinsic, intrinsic satisfaction and why this is different than the Facebook thing, bing, or the drug or the cookie is that this is internal. And when you make your own happiness, then it's yours. It's real. It's no one can take it from you. You're free. You're not dependent. You are independent. You are interdependent. And you, and you have what is called self-efficacy. And so now coming full circle to being this theme of the depression slayer. The number one factor that people feel when they're depressed is a lack of, they feel hopeless and helpless. They feel a lack of what researchers call self-efficacy. They feel like they have no influence or control in their life. And so they either feel really frozen and down about that, or they feel angry about that, or they feel afraid about that. It's all depression. It's all different ways of feeling disempowered. But when you learn how to empower yourself and generate your own happiness using your own body, your own mind, your own energy, your own brain, when you learn to train your brain, you have the definition of self-efficacy. You are empowered. And when you are empowered, depression is gone. Depression, to, in order for depression to exist, you have to feel disempowered and incapable of influencing your own circumstances. And this is a fundamentally a tool to influence your own circumstances on a moment-to-moment -moment basis and to train your brain to do the things that you want it to do more often by rewarding it. Yes. Yes, you got this, right? So... Find your signature, tie an image to it, see yourself, make that image big, bright, close, have a power word that goes with it that works for you, a yes, a woo, a boom, whatever it is, get fired up, <laughs> okay, feel the posture of it, feel the feelings in your body, anchor it in, well, how you anchor it in is, is that Feel that whole signature sensation in your and and you store it and code it by practicing it, and then use it every single time you do something good, every single time you do something positive, every single time you take even the tiniest step in the right direction. Celebrate! Woohoo! All right.
This is how you make habit formation easy. This is how you slay the beast of depression. Coming, coming to you from the Depression Slayer. Uh, these are tools and tricks that I've learned along the way to slay the beast of depression in my own life. And I hope they are helpful for you. And uh, please share them if they are. And uh, that's it. Love you all. Have a great night. That's our time. Please, questions in the comments below. I will be going back to YouTube once I get my technology thing sorted out. Happy Mother's Day once again to all of you out there and love you all. Good night.